now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. tonight coming to you from the east coast of the united states start ladies recording. and gentlemen yeah start recording yeah, ladies and gentlemen that's stephen pearl hello, hello everybody here we are again yeah in las vegas nevada uh yeah, 107 degrees outside is so. it really it's pretty hot oh. here we're at uh what is it uh 88 degrees to, well wait a minute let me look at my watch up there oh, excuse and me the summer 90. hasn't even started <laughs> it's 90 but tomorrow it's supposed to go down to like 30. I don't know. Oh, it's uh, 31, yeah, 30 <laughs> below. So, That's a Saskatchewan weather. Yeah, so how's everything going? How's your health? Yeah, it's, uh, my health is okay. My car isn't doing too well now, but my health is good. Oh, wait a minute. Either it's your computer that's broken or your car that's yeah. broken. What's wrong with the car now? Oh, it's having trouble starting. It starts, but sometimes it doesn't. I was stuck in front of 7-Eleven for an hour and a half there, like right, 3 in the morning. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, my estimation is there's something wrong with it. Yeah, that's, thank you. Thank you, <laughs> mechanic Ned. I, I called up AAA, said we can get there in two and a half hours. Like, oh, are you crazy? So I just, like, somehow I got the car started. It was a block from my house, so I got it home. Are you the kind of person that's always a sucker for these uh, mechanics? Because you don't know a thing about cars? I know nothing about cars. Yeah. I know so, how to drive one. That's so what I did. When they Barely. go, it's the rigging haba, and it's a big A, and the hit it has a win. You go, sure, go, how much? $1,000. Yeah, the thing isn't working, so I had to replace the doohickey. Your, your hubcap was rusted, so I had to give you a new engine and transmission. Yeah. That was $12,000. Yeah, yeah. And then you have to figure out whether it's worth buying a new car or just yeah. using the old one. Yeah, your Columbo's car is up for sale. I'll buy that one. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> it's always something. Yeah. And then uh, your computer's still out. Yeah, I haven't fixed that yet. I will. But uh, I got a gig at the end of the month. I'll take some a little bit of money. I'll get the computer fixed. Let, let, let's take stock of all of this. To begin with, how long have you been going now without your uh, computer? Well, I, I I use the phone, so I have a computer. I have every I have everything I need. So I haven't I've gone without a desktop for about six months now. I see, but the camera would be better. The picture, all of that would be steadier, easier for you to use oh, for these. The calls. desktop would be better. It'd be fun to yeah. sit at it and play the music with the bass and everything instead of the earphones. Yeah. Where my neighbor hears me at three in the morning go. Wah! Yeah, singing my favorite Musketeer yeah, so, so, jingles so, so and so it, it, it's been out for. Uh, several months. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm going to sneeze. Wow. <coughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Is the will made out? Am I in the will? You all right? <coughs> ah, have another Chesterfield. That's a, that's an allergic sneeze. There's no. something in the air something. today. Excuse me. I'm going to turn on the air conditioner here. It's, uh, it's getting a little on the toasty side here. Uh, so everybody might hear the air conditioner, but screw it. Anyway, so then uh, the last time I talked to you, I asked you if you had gotten your uh, vaccination. Yeah, sure. Boy. I got six of them. You got the one where you got to get 12 these days, these days you can roll out of bed and have somebody stick a needle in your arm. Ah, uh, nobody's sticking a needle in me, boy. Nah, I mean, I'm Ray Hollister. Uh, no, wait a minute. No, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Back up a little bit. This thing was created in a hurry. They don't know what's in it. Put some more Jello in there. Put some tartar sauce. Well, Put some do I look? Later. Do I look sick? Uh, you don't look like Vic Tanny. No, but uh, Vic Tanny. My God, your references are so remote. There's nobody. <laughs> I'm sure no look, world. There, there are very, very few people that remember Jack LaLanne. But <laughs> Vic Tanny. I live somewhere in a 1958 comic book. Only 10 Vic, cents Vic approved Vic was a guy who had, what, thousands of uh, gyms across the country? Yeah, back when gyms smelled like an armpit. You know? Yeah, Vic, Vic Tanny's gyms. And then all of a sudden, they just, where did they go? What happened to him? Uh, they were selling crack out of the back, so they got Vic. 
Yeah, no, but I mean, it's it's never telling. They nailed them both. No, but it's amazing that Vic Tanny uh, was was huge, just huge. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, yeah, but, was. but uh, Jack Lalane out 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 distanced him. I mean, Jack yeah. Lalane, Jack Lalane and case people don't even remember Jack Lalane mm-hmm. uh, was a guy who used to do exercises on TV. That's right. And then back in the old days, pulling a train meant Jack Lalane showing off a feat of strength. Well, he would like he would people. like haul a barge across the San Francisco yeah. Bay <laughs> by swimming. That's right. Yeah, he, he was amazing. Yeah. And and he kept doing that until he died at like. No, oh, yeah, he was like a, he, he. In fact, he, he was his own pallbearer at his funeral. That's how healthy he was. I'll carry this thing myself, guys. I don't need it. I mean, you always hear about guys. There was a guy by the name of Jim Fix. Do you remember Jim Fix? Jim, oh, the runner. Mm-hmm. He died running. <laughs> running with Jim Fix. Yeah, and he said he had heart problem, but he's he cured his heart problem by running, and he did all these uh-huh. videos. You know, Jim Fix on running and ba 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 ba, and uh, then uh, he he dropped dead of a heart yes, attack. He dropped dead running, and we all went and it, we all it, cheered. We all yeah. cheered because that he, he wrote itself. You know, you if you do what I do, you're gonna live forever. Yeah, but how yeah. about you? <laughs> you know, <laughs> there's a guy who said that on the Dick Cavett show, and he died on the show. Remember that, 1971. Yeah, they never aired it, but. Uh, some old guy said he had a certain diet. Oh, oh, oh! I, I know forever. who that was. The, I can't remember his name now, but he ran a, com- a, a, a magazine called Prevention Magazine, which was a uh-huh. health magazine all about vegetarianism and how to live the good life and how uh-huh. to live forever. And he's, in fact, he's on with Cavett. In fact, I know who was on with him, sitting in the chair next to him. It was a friend of mine. He was a comedian and a comic actor named Marshall Efron. Oh, I was a big guy. I remember him. Yeah. And Marshall was sitting next to him. He'd been on first. He'd been yeah. waiting forever to get on the Cavett show. Forever. And finally yeah. they booked him, and he gets on this show, and he does a really good interview and everything, and then he moves over on the couch, and they yeah. sit this guy down from Prevention Magazine. Rodale, that was his name. The uh, Rodale was his name. How do I remember those names? I can't remember all <laughs> my wife's name. I remember Big Danny. Anyway, so he... Uh, he uh, Rodale uh, is talking to him about how everything's wonderful and then all of a sudden they hear him go and he has what's called a gurgle it was like a gurgle uh-huh. and it's what no, what's known in the health business as a death rattle yeah death rattle hey, hey. and oh, he oh, dropped man. dead right hey. there in the chair next mm-hmm. to Dick Cavett sitting at the desk next oh, to God. my friend Marshall Efron who's sitting on the other side of him and uh, they call the, co- the the ambulances and they haul him away and the guy's dead. And uh, they never, uh, Marshall's episode never ran. Never aired it. They, I remember they, they ran and, one with Steppenwolf that and night. he said, when can I come back? And they said, well, we kind of consider you bad luck now. Oh, God. <laughs> That's not so right. So he was never invited back on the Cabot Show because this uh, guy yeah, had yeah, the yeah. audacity to die right next to him. Yeah. Oh, my God. The nerve. Yeah. It's an outrage. And he said, I'm sitting there, and this guy's going. Ah. It's just like this death rattle. And he's, we'll be right he's back going, after this word from Candy Graham. Yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's a great story. It's one of the great TV stories. <laughs> I remember when it happened. Didn't, didn't, and then they, uh, let me see here. I'm trying to think about the other health people. Spring of 71. Uh, is Richard Simmons still alive? I think so. <laughs> yeah, he's still around. Wait a minute. Let me not- let me ask the authority. Echo is Richard Simmons still alive? Well, that gave me an answer. Echo is Richard Simmons still alive? Richard Simmons is still alive. He's still alive. He's still alive. He's seventy. I met him. I saw him in L.A. when I first moved there. Stopped at a light. I was stopped right next to him. I blew him a kiss and he got mad. Yeah. Uh, Echo, stop. Now she's trying to sell me something. Uh, he uh, He's 73. 73? I didn't know he was that old. He was born in 1948. How about that? Yeah, yeah. So Richard Simmons is still alive. I, I remember what I loved about Richard Simmons is uh, I had him on my show, and he's talking about exercise and so on and so forth. He says, Alice, do you exercise? You know. Uh, no. No. He said, why don't you exercise? I said, I have a theory that if you don't use your body, it won't wear out. 
Uh-huh. <laughs> and he started almost choking. <laughs> he, he was abhor. He found that oh, abhorrent. Stars, buddy. Oh, my stars. I said, every time you work out, you're using your body up. Uh, you know, <laughs> you don't work out, keep hey, that body you're forever. You're about to die, Richard. You're about to die. We're going to leave that hair transplant, too. It may atrophy, you know. But do you do any exercise? Yes, I exercise every day. What do you do? I go to the gym. If I'm not at the gym, I, I have my little weights at home, and I try to take a 40-minute walk. You were doing weights when I was in San Francisco. Yeah, I still have my little dumbbells, just little uh, two twenty pound dumbbells, and I lift them like a hundred times a day or two hundred times a day, or whatever. Uh huh. And, 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 and do you have nice muscles? No. <laughs> so, but, well, uh, so, no, I guess uh, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. You know, I mean, the dumbbells must help. You know. <laughs> nothing. I got nothing. That, that, well, they're good for breathing in the heart and everything. Whatever else, it's exercise. It can't hurt you. I lately, I've been going for a mile and a half, two mile walks uh, it's good to walk that's the best exercise there is they say a couple of miles and uh it's a little harder for me now that i'm older of course yeah, yeah. but you know just do something you gotta do something even a 20 minute well, walk also yeah. i had a whole year of doing nothing uh-huh that's right okay never left the house yep so um, when i finally went <clears> for <throat> my first walk it was like i could barely get down the stairs you yeah know? i mean I know it was too. amazing just amazing yep. yeah but we did okay you know. No, I do uh, my little chin-ups at the gym when I go there every few nights and uh, when the car's working, uh-huh. and uh, then I do my little weights and at home. And, of course, home. you don't have to worry about COVID because you've had the uh, the vaccination. Yeah, I had 37 of them, but nothing can hurt me. Strong like bull. What, what is I it? drink river water. Really? I, I, I throw a boat over the wind building. You're, you're not a stupid human being. Well, I don't know. I'm a lazy yeah, human being. But why don't you want... You could go get your damn... Uh, um, oh, Oh, somebody's trying to get in here. Why? Why, why is that? Get rid the work of, of the devil. The work of the devil, I tell you. Uh, uh, I don't know why the people. Mr. F. I never even heard of Mr. F. Mr. F. He can he can go f himself. Anyway, yeah, where, where are we? Oh, so, no, I just I just don't understand that as an intelligent person that you didn't say. Hey, you know, I, I, be, I bet you know where the closest place is for you to get a vaccine. Oh, I know where there's like a dozen of them. Yeah. I know there's a lot you of You probably can go down to the 7-Eleven and you get a Slurpee with it. That's right. Yeah. You play the slot machine and you get a Slurpee and you get a shot. You're out of your head. You yeah. Do everything well. uh, you know, it's very simple. doesn't hurt, you know. And mm-hmm. uh, uh, th- then you have this feeling of being, what's the word I'm looking for? You're, you're safe, you know. And then you go blind in two years. Well, like we have some people visiting us here at the apartment from Florida. Which is, you know, highly uh, infectious area. And they are both uh, vaccinated. So we had no comp- no, no uh, um, uh, doubt but that they could come over and see us, right? Uh, and we hug each other at the door and everything. There's this freedom you get once you have the goddamn vaccination. I've been hugging people the whole time. Look at me, healthy, like, like bulls, strong. But maybe they don't want to be hugged by you. Well, they've been hugged by maybe me. They'd rather be, they get hugged by me. Maybe they'd be rather hugged by Andrew Cuomo. Well, you know. <laughs> yeah, no germs. <laughs> so clean air. Yeah, yeah. Well, luckily you avoided the COVID. And it, I think I had it two years ago because two years ago in February, I got really, really sick. Yeah, but there wasn't COVID. I already had a flu shot. And it was like a bad flu, and I was on my back for 10 days, man. What? So I think I had an early strain of it. No, no, there was no early strain of it. There was either the COVID or there wasn't. Okay. Well, COVID whatever it was, was, it put me on my back for 10 days, and I already had a flu shot. So it, I assume that might have been When was it. this? When was this? So two years ago in February. In February, Before two years ago? To get it. Uh, two years ago in February, so it wasn't last year in February. It's the year before. No, it was 2019. It, COVID wasn't, it wasn't even. It, COVID nineteen wasn't even in existence. It was around. I'm a hip cat. I'm ahead of my time. Oh, boy. I see. Uh, you're Doctor Science. You know all Dr. about science. This. I had it early, baby, and I beat it. You you beat it? Yeah, they broke the night I was watching Leaving Neverland. It was like three in the morning, and I thought, "Well, I was, I'm either going to die tonight or it's going to break." So I watched Leaving Neverland. Got creeped out. You may have had, it. you know, there was a precursor to COVID nineteen. It was called SARS. 
Maybe yeah. I had that. I had some. Then all of these are the same basic disease. The only reason it's COVID-19 is it was the 19th strain of COVID. Uh -huh. 19th uh, but it's the disease. COVID's been around for years in one form or another. It just has never been this dangerous. Okay. So, I don't know. I just I, I just don't understand why you're not getting it. It's just amazing. Hey, hey, nag, 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 nag. Ooh, I'm not nagging. I'm fine. Look at this. Nothing can kill me. Yeah. 65 years old. Next, we're going to hear about him coming down with COVID, being on a respirator, and dying. Yeah, well, so you got to die of something. Yeah. Are you afraid of death? No. I, I welcome it like an old friend. Are you kidding? Really? When comes knocking my door, I'm going to give him a bear hug, off from a ham sandwich, or you know, wherever you've been the last 10 years. God, I wish I could be that way. I really do. It's no big deal. It's the best bus in the world. That's why they save it for last. You think so? I don't know. <laughs> it's either something or nothing. If it's nothing, how bad is it? Be? I well, no I'm, at my age, I'm, I'm looking at it like uh, I, I remember I had uh, John Cleese on my show in San Francisco, and he talked about getting older, and he referred to it as I grow older with the grave ever yawning. <laughs> the and, British have a good way of putting things. And I wake up every morning with the grave ever yawning. Oh, like in, I'm 65. I can kill over any second. I'm in the die. You can die any second, club. Well, but well, I, yeah, it's what it is, man. It'll happen when it happens. It's well, let's deal. face it. You're in the die any second club when you're five, too. You know. Exactly. I mean, yeah, exactly. You can get hit by a brick or a falling piano or something. You know, but, in the fuck knows. Least, like, nothing's at guaranteed. Least, at least at that age, you got a fighting chance. You know? Yeah, he was fine, man. He put up a good fight. <laughs> and, and also, it's sadder when when a kid dies. Right, like right. at five or six, you go, "Oh my god!" You know. Nah, I just started thinking the as Well, I think he was going to grow up to be the next Hitler, so maybe it's better he's dead. Uh, uh, by the way, if uh, if uh, if you had, could go back in time, would you kill baby Hitler? Oh, of course. Do you? I draw a little mustache on him so he wouldn't look so cute. Then I'd bash his skull on. Do you think the 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 uh, problem was Hitler, or do you think the problem was the German people? Uh, it was a little of everything. See, because he was a soldier, he was a, he was a World War One soldier, so he had a war mindset. Everything had to be war. Well, I don't so. think he was that much of a soldier. You know, all I'm saying is that I think Hitler may have would have happened anyway. Somebody would have taken advantage of that gaping hole in the German psyche after oh, they sure. lost Somebody World War One. Somebody would have filled it. Uh, you know what? You know what I would do rather than kill baby Hitler. I would go back, and I would tell the world court or whoever was in charge of it, to not charge um, uh, Germany with uh, pay repayment for the war. Oh, they got screwed after World War One. See, if they hadn't done that, then it, mm -hmm. uh, Hitler couldn't have come into existence because nobody would care about a Hitler. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so, you know, but. Uh, well, but, but too they, late now. Oh, they they charged him, I don't know, billions of dollars or whatever the, a lot of money was in those mm -hmm. days. They couldn't have an army. They couldn't do a lot of stuff. Uh, yeah, and, but they had to pay back. Uh -huh. And that's what drove the company broke. Yep, you know? yep. And a loaf of bread was like 560,000 Deutschmarks or something. 5,000 marks for Wunderbread. Of Wunder, Wunder, Wunderbread with the little balloons on the side of the packets that the Jews blew up. Wunderbread, Wunderbread with Wunder, a W? Wunderbread. Wunder, 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 Wunder. Oh, boy. So, uh, are you working soon? Uh, let's see. I got, uh, um, 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 they, I'm doing a gig at the end of the month for the Laugh Factory. Then I'm doing a gig at the end of July for the Laugh Factory in Reno. And then I'm going to try to get into Brad Garrett's Comedy Club. They told me to get in touch with them over the summer. And we're having a memorial for Carl LeBeau there in July, July 18th, right before his birthday at Brad Garrett's club. Now, now Carl <laughs> LeBeau, who was Kinnison's best friend. Yeah. One of the he funniest did, guys ever. He died? I didn't know that. Yeah, he died on April 23rd. Oh, really? Cancer, I, may, I may have heard about it and it just slipped my mind. What did he die? Yeah, that was, oh, that was he, wasn't, sad. he wasn't Good that guy. old, was he? Not 63 or something. Yeah, and what did he die of? Uh, cancer. Really? What kind? Yeah, what, what he kind? had stage four cancer for a while. What kind? Fucked him up. What kind? Uh, I think bone cancer is bad. It was something they could do oh, about really? it. Oh, so. really? Okay. All right. It was horrible. It was horrible. So yeah, because I, I, had, I had cancer, you know. I had prostate cancer. 
Yikes. I had impetigo. But they, you know, it, 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 they said if you're going to get any kind of cancer, that's the one to get because it's more most curable. That or skin cancer, yeah, I think. Yeah, you know, they haven't found a sign of early. it. They haven't found a sign of it in me now. Hey, catch it early. Catch it early. Get checked out. Fuck the yeah. vaccine. Get checked for cancer. Uh, uh, what do you mean? Get checked for cancer and get a vaccine, you moron, yeah, yeah, idiot. Yeah, sure. You're just such a <laughs> moron. You're just such a fucking moron. <laughs> Why? What is that? You just, you just, I'm, you know. I'm shooting up now. Oh, man. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be Stephen Pearl, and I'm gonna be against everything. I am. I'm with Q. <laughs> I believe the Earth is flat. There are 117. Paul McCartney's walking around. We never went to the moon. I believe it all. Yeah. And well, I never happened. Yeah. Anyway, hey, listen. I think we've kind of run out of time here. Well. Well. Yeah. Well. It's, it's good. It's good. It's great talking with you. It was fun. It was fun to talk to you and see you and everything. Let's do it again in a couple of weeks. Ladies and gentlemen, the lovely, the attractive, he's working comedy here and there, skits and sketches, Stephen Perry. Thank you. Skits and sketches, bits and bits. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And there he was, Stephen Pearl, ladies and gentlemen. Yay! Oh, man, oh, man. Hello, everybody. How are you tonight? Uh, I'm here once again uh, to do yet another few... Uh, you know, I don't know. Somebody, give me give me a pep talk. I mean, I need more people uh, watching this thing. I'm starting to feel that uh, the audience is just disappearing on this show. And uh, uh, quite frankly, it makes me wonder why I should keep doing it. Now, don't give me the, oh, you do it because it's fun. And um, I'm in show business, okay? And I like to get an audience. And lately, it's just been horrendous because Facebook changed uh, the way in which they report to my, uh, or any Facebook uh, people. Uh, when something is being done by somebody. And so therefore, where before I could get lots of large numbers after a show to let everybody know that the show was up and able to look at it, um, uh, it does, they don't do that anymore. So it's changed the whole way in which we do business. Man, my nose is dripping. Ay, ay, ay. Here we go. I don't know. It's one thing, it's another. Excuse me for a moment, folks. I turned my mic off so you wouldn't have to hear that. Ah, there we go. Okay, so anyway, uh, you know, I, I just, I don't know, I'm kind of been getting very depressed about it. And uh, 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 let me see here. Uh, it says, uh, what happened to Peter Arno guy who used to be in chat? And uh, Vernon says, maybe Alex blocked him. I think I did, actually, uh, because the guy was just a pain in the ass. And uh, it, it, John Redshaw is asking us. Uh, he never told us. Uh, anyway, so uh, I uh, so I'm, I'm just, I don't know, maybe it's time to find something else to do on the Internet, another kind of show. Uh, I think it's maybe that time for me to seriously consider uh, changing what we do here or changing the amounts of time in which I do it. The Monday show I, I enjoy and would keep and it's simple and it's easy peasy and it's a bunch of really amiable people. I love the people I have on this show uh, to, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday but maybe that's too many days a week of doing it. And if we did it less, people would pay more attention to a single episode than they would, uh, uh, you know, uh, five, ep four episodes a week. I think that's an old radio concept I've got to kind of leave behind. But whatever. And now as I look out here, there are only two people waiting to come on to the show right now. So, I, you know, why do I do this? Why do I do this? I have no idea. It's just ridiculous. Anyway, uh, I think I should probably admit the people that are here uh, so that they can uh, be a part of our program. 
and uh, uh, you know we just got uh, we just got uh, two two people here, um, and um, let me go over here. There we go. There they are. It's Charlie Wallace and it's Trucker Steve, and that's it. Alan won't be here tonight. Alan won't be here tonight. Yeah, he uh, he wrote me or something and said that he has a dinner or something. So Alan isn't going to be here tonight, and it's just Charlie and Trucker Steve. So that's it for tonight, folks. I'll see you all later. Uh, and all the conspiracy theorists who think that they're magnetized. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, have you been seeing those things? Yeah. Did you see that woman who tried to show a committee that she was magnetized? And she put something metal on her, on her forehead, and it stuck. But I can do that with anything. Yeah. I can do that with spoons and everything, right? But then she tried to put it down here, and she kept falling. It wouldn't stick. Yeah. And she kept saying, oh, well, it, it usually works. Yeah, like you're magnetized. Isn't it, isn't it considered that it's some kind of co-conspiracy with uh, the... Um, uh, with um, uh, the 4G or the 5G? It's 5G, and then there's magnets in the vaccination, and it's causing these things to stick to people. Now, I don't find that a horrible idea because then you'll never lose your keys. You know, so what have you? Listen, I got to talk to you about your 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 governor down in oh. uh, down in Texas. What is with his latest insanity with making? digital passports for vaccinations illegal yep illegal mr business owners do what they want they don't have to bake cakes for for gay people but they can't make you wear a mask well i mean here's the thing i i don't i i just don't get what he thinks he's doing how this fits into any game plan at all you know what I'm saying? No, he's just trying to keep on on uh, Trump's good side. He's trying to keep on Trump's good side. Yep. Why? Does he, what, what's Trump gonna do for him? What can Trump do for anybody? You know, this is idiotic. It's it's moronic. Uh, so, what the hell? Uh, yeah, Trump's a loser. Yeah, he's a, a loser. Whatever, however you do that. Yeah. No, you know, uh, I just I don't understand that uh, that that governor of yours because it's like if anybody says that they uh, and and this is what's amazing about it. If anybody says that you can't come into my store if you aren't vaccinated, you can't do that. That's against the law. Am I right? That's against the law in now, Texas. Now, yeah. how does that fit in with the right-wing attitude that you have a right to do with your business what you want to do with your business? That's exactly. They don't care. That's all it, bullshit anyway. I mean, it hypocrisy. Does, it, huh? It's hypocrisy. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. I mean, if I have a business and I don't want to let you in because you, you haven't been vaccinated, then I have the right to do that. You know, I'm not discriminating against you because of your color or your age or your sex or any of those other things, just that you haven't had a vaccination, which makes me perhaps more uh, culpable, uh, not culpable, what's the word I'm looking for? More uh, 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 liable. Well, no, not li well, and libel is another one too. Somebody comes into your store, somebody else is there, he has COVID, he gives it to you, can't you sue me? Probably could. Yeah. But so is this governor a right winger? Does he consider himself a right winger? Is he just an asshole? <laughs> oh, let's see here. I think I think uh, Charlie is frozen. Uh oh. Are you, are you there, Charlie? Oh, there he is. Now he's okay. Yeah, I'm ha they're having internet problems here in, in my apartment complex, I think. Is that it? Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway. I mean, he's a moron. The guy's a moron. He's not. A, he's obviously not a right winger. If we were a right winger, he'd say, "Hey, if you don't want somebody coming into your place because they haven't had a vaccination, you have a right to do that." Yep. You know, 
And here I am, a left winger, standing up for that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're right to not have to put up with people who haven't had a had a vaccination. Speaking of vaccinated people, here's Kathleen. Yeah, all vaccinated and looking pretty. Did you feel, uh, did things start, metal pieces start sticking to you? Uh, oh my God, I saw that. That was hilarious. The woman? Oh, what a dumb broad. She puts it on a park that's leaning back. All she had to do was get it over and it would fall off. That was hilarious. Well, I can usually make stuff stick to me, especially if I'm sweaty. I can take a piece of metal and probably put it on my forehead and get it to stick. Remember I used to do the trick with a spoon? With, yeah. yeah. With a spoon? Yeah. The or, creamer one's better. Oh, well, the creamer one is a great stun. I, I told that. I told my dad about that, and he just about died laughing. I go, the kid at the next table well, just let me Let me explain to you. Like, you know these, well these little Alex. creamers that are on every table at a restaurant? Well, what you do is you, you kind of, Penn Jillette taught me this trick, and he, he'll teach it to anybody who wants to learn it. It's, uh, but what you do is you take a fork <clears throat> and you pry at your eye a little bit to bring it down like this and go, okay, I think I'm ready. And what you're doing is you're palming the creamer in your hand and you take the fork and you put your hand like this and stick the fork in there and all this white juice comes flying out. And he says, every time you do it, people fall for it. Somehow, they think that whatever is inside your eyeball is white. Right? So, next time you go out, just do that. Just All you do is you just take the creamer, palm it, and then go, look what I can do, and then you will... And it comes spurting out. Of course, you get the table all messy, but hey, give your waitress an extra tip, okay? You know. You used to love it when I would do that, right? Oh, I'll never forget when you did it and the kid at the next table just freaking let out this blood curdling scream. <laughs> You're like, hey, it's a, the parents are looking, it's a trick. And I'm like, Good job, Alex. You, you know what one of my other table tricks is? You take a, um, a, a salt shaker, or rather you take a, a pepper shaker is the best thing you do. Take the pepper shaker, you know how the top comes off? And you take a piece of paper like this, a piece of towel, and you put it there, and you create a little kind of like uh, a, 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 a little place where you can put stuff. In other words, you push it into the top of that thing, and then you have a little well there, and then you pour into the salt a whole bunch of pepper. And then you screw the top back on and then you rip the sides away from yeah. the paper that's in there and you just leave it there. The next person who tries to get salt gets pepper. <laughs> Nobody seems amused by these table okay. tricks. Uh, huh? It happened to me too many times. It happened to you too many times? Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, it, 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 oh, you have had that happen. I've been the, oh, did you go in after me? Is that what? <laughs> I was in college in the, in the cafeteria in the dorm. Mm -hmm. You know, you go eat lunch or dinner or whatever. You try and put salt on something and some idiot had put pepper in the thing and it'd get pepper out. Yeah, yeah. That's a great little trick. Great little trick. Look at me, magic, folks. It's supposed to be salt, but look, it's pepper. Anyway, that's why I bring my own song. If people don't start calling, I'm going to start telling more of these stories. Um, so anyway, you you look like you're hot, Vernon. You've got like a towel around you. Well, today was mostly raining, and I wasn't able to go out and do my usual walk, so my allergies are all oh, is that it? Messed up, wow. and I've got I've got a. Thermacare on the back of my neck because that seems to help it. Yeah, but how how does uh, how does uh, um, um, how does that happen? That you that uh, you know you say you're having allergy problems, but well, you, yet you, but anyway. yet it's raining, so it's that's not allergy problems. Probably sinus problems is from the yeah. rain. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, when I put when I put a Thermacare on my back of my neck, I put a towel around it to hold the heat in. Yeah. Well, I went out today and I took my little walk for, uh, oh, gee, how much how much time did I do? I did about almost two miles today, you know. 
Um, but I was tired all the time, just tired all the time. I don't understand it. But it's not tired enough that I can't walk two miles, you know. Uh, By the way, I told my wife your joke that your father taught you to tell in, in, in adult yeah. company about the frog. Yeah. He went right over her head. What? <laughs> Wait a minute. The punchline is it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's the princess and oh. the frog story, and she, he's in yeah. bed with her overnight, and the next morning she wakes up, and there's a handsome young prince. I'm just telling this for people who didn't hear it the other day. So I'm shortening it. Handsome young prince lying in bed with her, and uh, uh, to this day her parents don't believe the story. But oh, um, so, you know. <laughs> And I would, my father taught me that joke, and he said, tell them the joke, kid, uh, Bolo. That was my nickname, Bolo. And I go, oh, okay, and I had to tell the story. And people would just bust out laughing, and I didn't even get the joke, okay? I didn't even get it, but I told it beautifully. And people just love when a little kid tells a dirty story. Man, they're happy with that one, you know. So anyway, so let's see, Tony isn't here tonight, Alan isn't here tonight, Brian isn't here tonight, nobody's here tonight, except... Yeah, call Robert, see if you can get him on. Robert, oh Robert, the coast is clear, there isn't a Tony, and there isn't a, there isn't an Alan, and there isn't a Phil, and there isn't, a, it's just the nice, intelligent, wonderful people that I have here. These are, this is the cream of the crop here. What can I say? Why did Rob, does Robert not much care for them? Well, I don't know. I think he, 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 he felt, for instance, the other night, I think, that uh, Tony, in his coffee-addled-pated state, was getting to be a bit much, and he didn't want to have to contend with it by calling yeah. in. Okay. And I don't blame him. I was having a hard time contending with it. Jeff almost quit. Just say goodbye, I'll see you later. You know, the lucky part about you guys is that at any point during this show, if you want to say, I'll see you later, you can just leave. I got to stay here till midnight. <laughs> Unless it's just you and Charlie left and Charlie freezes up, then you can yeah. just end the show. Yeah, well, Charlie freezes up. This One of my cameras did freeze up the other night on me. You know, so... Oh, uh, well, anyway. Uh, so, but, and, and again, you know, tonight I'm feeling tired. I'm always tired. I'm always pooped. Uh, and I don't, I don't know what it is, you know. But uh, it's funny. I, I wrote my urologist today. And the reason I wrote him was I should get a PSA test about every six months just to see, you know, how the... The whole thing's been going and so on, you know, with the operation that I had. And I've heard nothing from my doctor. And I write him on a thing called my chart, which supposedly every other doctor I have answers if they're on my chart. Uh, and I never heard from him back saying, when should I get a PSA test? And they never got a hold of me. And so finally, I wrote to his nurse, and this is at Mount Sinai. And she says, uh, she says, uh, she writes back, well, you know, I can send you a script and you can go down to Quest and get it, you know, the blood draw. And uh, she says, or you can go to your own urologist. And she was so cavalier about it. Come on. You went in, you did first radiation on me, which was about $40,000, and they said $60,000 worth of prostate seeds, right? And then after the fact, you don't give a shit? I think once a year is enough. Well, it probably is. But uh, I, I wrote my, my urologist, and I told him what was going on, and he said, forget them. Just come see me. He says, here's the reason why. He said, they got you $110,000. Mount Sinai doesn't give a shit now. Do you it, get an annual physical? Uh, yeah, I get one for my my primary physician. Yeah. Just ask him to run a PSA. Well, you get I, yeah, I can ask him to do, but I would, you know something, I would rather go to this urologist. You know why? Because I like him. 
uh, I mean, I like my primary physician too, but I like him and I think it would be really nice to be able to get him a little cash, okay? Make him something, you know? And he said, if you come see me, he says, uh, you know, I'm not gonna make the same 110K they made off of you, but at least I'll get $75 and that will help, you know? And he's really so nice that I'm gonna go, to, I'm just gonna do it all with him and let him check me up. He says, you don't have to, he wrote back, he said, you don't have to go back and see that guy ever. You know, he did what he's gonna do. He, he did the, the, big, uh, the big operation and so on. But that bothers me because I think that if I'm, uh, you know, if, uh, uh, there's always a chance it could come back and I should be checked regularly and they should get a hold of me and say, hey, come on down and get checked, you know? Uh, and, uh, but he, but he uh, what bothered me was that he said, over oh, Mount Sinai, they really don't give a crap. They got your money, you know? And, and that's why I think it's always best to do better. You always do best with some kind of primary physician or some primary urologist or whatever the specialty happens to be. And not the guy at the big hospital is going to do the operation because once the operation's done, he's made all he's going to get out of you. He doesn't care about the lousy seventy-five dollars he would get if he did a blood draw at his office. So you know, here I go talking about health again. Uh, but uh, hello, John Larkin, how are you doing tonight? Pretty good. How you doing? Well, we didn't have any trouble with that naked picture of. Uh, of uh, Marilyn Chambers you showed last night. Yeah, I know. I was going to use it for my background, but I thought I better not. Yeah, how much did she charge you for that? Probably like twenty bucks or something. Really? Yeah. They... I know. Uh, when, when I when I was there, it was probably nineteen eighty six. Yeah. And the time that she appeared there before that in nineteen eighty five, she got arrested by uh, the San Francisco police. Came and raided the place. Wow. That's when. That's when Feinstein was mayor, and Feinstein had a big bug up her ass about that place. She was always busting them. Yeah, yeah, and yet they were one of the more legitimate places around. Yeah. You yeah. know, they were, they were just old hippies, you know, who thought it would yeah. be fun to make dirty movies. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, 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 yeah, I was wondering how much you charge you for that, because they don't do that for nothing. No, you know, that's, no. They I go, paid 20 bucks for that picture. Well, you know, it's cool, huh? Here it is. Yeah. Well, but in the day when he did it, well, don't hold it up again. Let's not tempt fate. No money tonight. Let's not tempt fate. You know. Do you know? You know, over the last year, I, I've made two hundred bucks off this show. Yay! <laughs> hey. That's why if hit the subscribe button, everybody. Yeah. Already have. You already have, yeah. yeah. And what happened to your what happened to your computer? It blew up, right? No. <laughs> well, that's what happens when you hit that subscribe button. If you hit a subscribe button on any of these stations that's out there, your computer will blow up. In fact, you will be hit with ransomware. Okay. So. And gonadism. And gonadism. <laughs> Yeah. No, I think it was really kind of funny where the people who got Colonial Pipeline, mm -hmm. <laughs> the FBI had had already what was already watching them, and they re they recovered like half of the money. Well, they did, and and, think, and that's yeah. where Colonial did 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 a nice job because they got a hold of the FBI and said, "We want to warn you, this is what's happening. We also want to warn you that we're going to pay them off." And they said, "Okay, start paying them off. Let us know how you're doing it. We'll follow the money." And they did. And they did to the tune of being able to stop about two and a half million out of the five million that Colonial paid off. Meanwhile, that meat company, SKG, I think it's called. JBS. Or JBS, whatever it's called. It's it's not even an American company. It's a Brazilian. SKG. <laughs> it's a Brazilian company. Uh, they uh, paid $10 million. Wow. And none of it was recovered because they never told the FBI they were paying them off. So. Same shape. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I, I Listen, I've had that problem. Uh, there's ransomware going around. I have one of these things called a, a raid. It's a, 
uh, uh, you know, it has like four hard drives in it, and it uh, it duplicates itself and everything, so nothing gets lost in it, and whatever. But all of a sudden, it's made by a company called QNAP, and QNAP got hit with a series of, of ransomware things, where people who had these QNAPs got ransomware, where they went to their computer, they went to the drives, and nothing was there anymore. All the files, names had been changed and all of that. And there was a nice little note there that said, if you want all your stuff back, we'll send you the code to recreate it and get it back if you pay us $500. Now, the reason they weren't asking for millions like these others is because they knew these were people like me and like Charlie and like you guys who buy these QNAP machines and and it, we don't have that kind of money, but it, to save all our stuff, we might be willing to pay $500. So the, they, they go for a reasonable price, whatever they think the traffic will bear. And I know that they were hitting me. They were trying to hit me with this particular uh, program uh, because I saw constantly that it was coming up that things were trying to access my machine, okay, mm -hmm. my QNAP machine, and they weren't able to get in because apparently I'd had things set up so that it didn't easily get these people. <laughs> yeah, there, there we go. There we go. Uh, um, so uh, I know they were trying to hit me with it. And then they. There we go. They, Hello? Yeah, they sent out a thing from QNAP saying how you can set up your machine so that they can't get in. And I set it all up that way. So now I don't even get those messages that people are trying to access my machine, so. You set up a virtual VPN, is that what you do? No, it's not a v virtual VPN, no, no. Oh, okay. Mm. This is a hard, this is a series of hard drives. This all goes out on your in-house network. So all my videos, all my, uh, all the shows that we do here, all my porn are all on this QNAP, okay? Now, if I have it made so it can go out and be picked up anywhere outside here, I make it more vulnerable. So I made it so no, nobody can get in to look at it. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, that, that's what these companies have to do, only it's a much more sophisticated problem for them. But supposedly you talked about a VPN, <coughs> VPN, a virtual... Uh, private network. Private networks. And I have one here, and I never really use it. And the reason huh? these guys, got, the reason these guys got yeah. in uh, to um, uh, Colonial was through a VPN, through their VPN. So it wasn't really protecting them. Where, Ooh, where look at that is, sunset. Where is Brian? Brian, where are you? I'm at home. I'm outside. Wow, that's gorgeous. Let's see your home. We've never seen your home. This is uh, Amadin Valley in uh, San Jose. So it's like uh, up that mm -hmm. way is Santa Cruz Mountains. Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a big box up on the top of the mountain. It's a mm -hmm. big building. Yep. So no, that, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the highest. There's three three of these. This one, and what's the other ones, Larkin? It's. Uh, well, there's uh, Mount Num Num and the one uh, Mark, where the. Uh, Mount what? Num Num? Yeah. Num -num? yeah. Um, there, um, um, there's three of them that are the highest points in the Bay Area, and they used to connect with radar, right? Yeah. Oh, there's yeah. Mount Diablo. Yeah. And uh, the, what's the mountain where the uh, Lick Observatory? Hamilton? Mount, Mount Hamilton. Yeah, Mount Hamilton. Mount yeah. Hamilton. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's over that yeah, way. Let me so see this here. is yeah, one well, of our why, house. Why don't you turn your camera <laughs> sideways so maybe we get more of a... Oh, I there had we it. Go. And then, uh, I thought there you told go. me to turn. Okay, there, there you go. go. There you yeah, go. Th this is why I'll never sell this house. I'm going to be an old man on my rocker just watching the sunset every night. Can they build across the street from you? Or No, this is the junior high. So this is the soccer field back here. And then yeah. the school. Yeah, the school's right there. And we have basketball and baseball and tennis. And uh, yeah, everything here. Do you, you, mind, do you mind showing my... us your house? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right here. Very uh, nice. Oh, very nice. 
Ooh. Yeah, so we got a huge oak tree here, so it gives us some shade. And because all the uh, up there, there's a bunch of um, it's called a Quicksilver Mountain or Quicksilver mm -hmm. Trails. So there's a whole there's a reservoir back there, so you can go hiking. So a lot of people come here and they walk up the street and go hiking. So these big oak trees are everywhere up there. So they mm -hmm. you know, they kept some around when they built the houses. So now, uh, Shmudi, you still <laughs> own your home down in Tracy, right? Yep, it's yeah. almost paid for. A couple more years. A couple more right. years, and it's all paid for. Oh, there's this car yep. he's working on. Yeah, yeah there, there's uh, for sale, for sale. And, <laughs> and, uh, and, and, um, and doing Cadillac? some. Kathleen, you still have the pool, no, right? It's my well, Cadillac. Where's the pool going to go? Cadillac. Yeah. Uh, see, yeah. see, this is this is what I was doing. I was working in the garage. Oh, oh there, you, there's our program. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Watching the program and uh, yeah, so I just decided to call in a little bit. These, yeah. these are all my awards from from a couple of my cars I've had. Oh yeah. really? Oh okay. Just, you know, yeah. Schmoody, a few hundred of Schmoody them. I don't here, know how many. Schmoody restored a Volkswagen. Hey, Brian, wait a minute, hold on a second. Were you out shopping for a uh, for a fancy sports car the other day? I saw you on Facebook. Yeah, I'm looking for a McLaren right now. That's my my dream car. So, yeah. Yeah. But where are you gonna put nice. it? You got no room. No, <laughs> I'm selling this one. I'm selling my Mercedes. So this is a '85 Mercedes AMG uh, 500S. It's a European model, so it's real popular. And then my daily driver is the Cadillac. So I'm gonna now. Did you sell all three and just have my my convertible? Did you re 34. Did you, did you restore these? Uh, no, I customize them. So this is chopped and okay. and uh, yeah, it's a bunch of work done to it. Well, Shaved now, now, everything now off. No Ka door handles. Kathleen, yeah. Kathleen restored a buggy. I remember when she got it, a Volkswagen Bug. It was it was a mess. It was a piece of shit. It was Miss Crunkety. <clears throat> and finally, and the the pans were rusted. So I had custom pans made because I'm six feet tall. So when I drove it. My both the passenger and the driver's seat were against the back seat, but if I ran very little gas in the gas tank, second gear, I could pop the front end off the ground. Yeah. Oh my God. And it sold in four hours on eBay for ten grand. Oh yeah. Yeah, but that how much? Was, how much? My nineteen how much 1940 Cadillac LaSalle that I sold about four years ago. I built. I built that one. That was all stock. And what it. song was LaSalle in? Uh, all in the family. All in the family theme song. <laughs> our, our so old LaSalle ran great. Yeah. Those were the days. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, and what, one more quick thing I'll show you. So, this one is... Wait, I can smell the is, oil, can't you, guys? <laughs> this is the car I bought. 1934 Cadillac. Mm -hmm. And that's the one I'm working on now. It sort of looks... It looks like... It's going to look like this one when it's done, but it's not done yet. They tried to make so. those cars look a little like Duesenbergs, didn't they? Maybe. Yeah, this one is... Uh, especially... Yeah, especially this one because it's uh, really wealthy people owned it because they had the golf club door. So the guys would have a regular car and they would take this one on the weekends with their buddies. Well, when, so. I, when I was a kid, when I was growing up, a uh, teenager had a girlfriend. Her husband... Her father... Her husband. Her father uh, was restoring a Auburn. Uh huh. You know the Auburn. It was made by the, I think yeah. the same people who made the Duesenberg, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, but it was a, it was a great little car. I mean, they were they had that real you know that real streamlined facing into the wind look. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. With the big fenders. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Yes, yeah. Beautiful cars. Yeah. Yeah. What got you into doing this? I've always been into cars. So my parents used to take me to car shows and stuff like that. And so, yeah, I just was always into cars. Wow. So, wow. That's yeah. amazing. Wonderful. Yeah. So I, I, too many though, I, even though I only have a few, but I, I just want to have one car as my, so my 34, ca 34 convertible Cadillac. That's my Mm -hmm. Just that one, and then I want to get a sports car. So I've been looking at McLarens and stuff like that. So right, right. Well, that's really, that's really terrific. What a, what a nice tour. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and that's your garage. 
Yeah, yeah. Nobody comes in here, so that's good. <laughs> I can relax. Does your wife ever get mad at it at all, or does she just does she understands it's part of what you are and you got to do it, right? Uh, she always says that she's never ever parked her car in the garage. <laughs> uh, Once. <laughs> so. I mean, does she ever complain like uh, Brian? I need a second dress. You know, <laughs> oh, we no, quit spending no, no, money no. on those damn cars. Yeah, no, she, she, no, 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 she doesn't. No, oh. she just bought a, a couple of Chanel's. I bought her a couple and then she bought one Chanel purses. And so, yeah, so okay, I, that'll, yeah, I, that'll show I got a smile good. because I know it's, you know, you know, $5,000 and it's just the purse, but then I know that my Chrome costs a lot more than that. So I shut up. I'm smart. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what, 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 I can't remember the kind of gifts that you enjoyed, Kathleen. Uh, but you know, I'm a minimalist, so for the most part, you weren't much into fashion, were you? No, nope. no, no, no. I I could buy you like a, a cell phone, and you would be happy with that as a present. Totally. Right? Yep. Yeah. Pair yeah, of hiking Tiff boots. Yeah, Tiffany's Tiffany's never been like that either. But then, yeah. So just wanted to get her something nice. So. Oh, well, that's that's very nice. You're a very nice husband. How long have the two of you been married now? Uh, seven years. Seven Something years. Like that. So you better know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Quick. What day is your anniversary? It's February seventeenth. Oh, okay. <laughs> but you know what's funny is is the kids' birthdays are February fifteenth, and then we have February seventeenth as anniversary, and then and then uh, the twenty third is the other kids' birthday. Oh my God, everything's all at once. So um, and then you have Valentine's Day on February fourteenth. So like that week, I'm like no money after that. <laughs> wow, wow. So anybody today get to see um, uh, Biden with Bor with uh, what's his name, the, the guy in Russia? I mean, no. Yeah. Oh, Putin. No. Or no. Putin. Or Shots in the UK. Oh. What was Did it? What's his name? Dare? Huh? Did he call this now? Right? Yeah. Never. Yeah. Uh, Drives me nuts. <laughs> yeah, his hair is weird. Yeah. But it seems he's like, like a British Trump. The, he well, looks like Trump's British twin. Well, but the, he was. He was like really palsy wowsy with Trump, and now that Trump's gone, he's kind of saying, "Well, things seem to be all right with the United States now." Yeah. Like he was only putting up with Trump because he had to put up with Trump. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What's his name again? I'm, I'm a my mind. Boris Johnson. Johnson. Boris Johnson. Okay. He, he's like Gary Busey. Doesn't he look like Gary yeah, Busey? Totally. Yeah. Yeah. If Gary Busey were sane, uh, <laughs> he didn't even comb his hair when he got married. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Well, no, but that's been his. See, that's been his calling card. You know. If if everybody said that looked like shit, he would comb it, okay. But he he that's his style, you know. But uh, what's her name? Um, uh, Biden's wife, Jill. Uh, Jill. Jill Biden uh, had a had a, dre a jacket on with the word love sewn on the back. Yep. What was that all about? Difference between her and 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 uh, Melania. Malaria. Yeah. Well, didn't Melania? With her, I don't give a shit. Do you or whatever she had on her jacket? Oh, so she decided yeah. to wear love on her back to as a response to that. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Anybody watch any of the right wing stations to see what they were saying about that? I'm sure they were complaining about it. I mean, they complain about everything. They're not happy with anything. They just make shit up to complain about it, you know? Yeah, yeah. The Fauci crap is it's just, just a joke, you yeah. know? Well, you know, they, they, they're really going after Fauci, and I'm trying to figure out why. I mean, what is so terrible about Fauci? You know? Because I, I think because he made... He, he made Trump look like such an idiot, you know? No, he didn't make Trump look like an idiot. Quite the contrary. Trump made himself look like an yeah, idiot. Yeah, I know. I've got to admit it, that, that uh, uh, Fauci put himself in great jeopardy of not being respected because he didn't want to go against the president. He didn't want yeah. to 
you know, he, he probably also figured that if he played along with the president for a while there, maybe he could get what he wanted out of him, you know, mm -hmm. uh, how wrong he was. But I just always felt that Fauci um, was pretty much a good guy, you know, yeah. and that I, I felt sorry for him during the Trump era because he had to put up with Trump. And he, but he, on the other hand, he couldn't come out against him because otherwise he wouldn't get anything done. And and uh, what's her name? Who's the other, the woman, Scarfy? Scarfy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Deborah Burks. Yeah, she didn't survive it as well, though. Most people hate her for her association yeah. with Trump. Yeah. But, I mean, here you've got a guy like Fauci, whose big calling card before this was that he helped cure AIDS. All right? Not a bad accomplishment in your time. And now, secondarily, he's helping to stop COVID. I mean, what is, what's terrible about this guy? And he's worked with all those presidents, right? Didn't he? How far did he go back? Didn't he go he, back to Bush or something? Six yeah. presidents. Six Reagan? presidents, does yeah. He, does he like, go back to Reagan? Reagan? Well, I saw, a, uh, I saw a documentary on the AIDS crisis. And there was a very young Fauci being interviewed. Uh, so he has to have gone back to the era of AIDS, and that would have to take him back to uh, to Reagan. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But, I mean, I just don't understand this going after Fauci. I mean, what's, what what did he do that was wrong? Oh, he asked He us, wouldn't say what, what Trump wanted him to say. Well, yeah. well, he kept saying you got to wear masks, <clears throat> and people didn't like that. Oh, the mask became this political thing, you know. But, yeah, but it, also, hmm? they, they go after him because right in the very beginning he said, "Well, you probably don't need to wear mask. I don't want to scare everybody." But that was like within the first couple of days. Within a yeah. week, he was saying, "You got this is crazy," you know. You got to You got to well, wear masks. What he did, he admitted a, it. He, but he's, but he's, they're saying, "Oh, he's covering it up." Blah blah blah. Well, so bullshit. But he's a scientist, and he follows the science. Yeah. And yeah, at but, that moment, they didn't think that we needed yeah. uh, masks. <laughs> then a couple of weeks later, after new evidence came in about what it was and how it was spread, he said, "Wear masks." Yeah. This is yeah. what a scientist does. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And and but, they but got. Hmm. Oh, I was say, but but at, <clears throat> after he was gone and Biden was in place, the first interviews, you know, the first set of interviews that Fauci was doing, they were hinting like, oh, wow, now you're actually free to say what you want. And he would sort of hint like, yes, you know, so he was putting down Trump a little bit at the beginning of, you know, uh, uh, I don't the think, Biden I, don't, I think I, that's why I, right I, when you do that to Trump, Trump's going to rip into you. I don't think I've ever heard him put down Trump. I, no, I, I've heard him kind of not answer a question or yeah. step back from a question about Trump, but he has never really dissed Trump publicly. Right, but he was saying that he had more freedom now to say what he wanted to. Well, he, 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 he did say a couple things like that the first interviews he had. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, he felt he was, in, you know, he was able to do what he could, what, it, what, what had to be done. Mm -hmm. And I gotta tell you, you know, if you think about it, um, Biden's only been president for, what, five months, six yeah. months now? Uh, going into the sixth month. Uh, 20th, it'll be six months. Uh, and in that time, he has completely wiped out a disease. You know? Now, if Trump were president, do you think we'd be this far ahead of the game? No. I think we'd be no. over. I think we'd be well over six hundred thousand deaths. He wouldn't be pushing the vaccines, not like Biden did from day one. Yeah. You know, he'd what? be trying to make money off of them somehow. What's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> from vaccine? That's right. <laughs> you know what the side effect of the whole mask wearing was this year is that it turned out that people didn't come down with the normal flus. Yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe it's a good idea every flu season if we all put on masks. Yeah. Yeah, you know. for sure. Yeah. You know. Asia, they do it. Yeah. Oh, Asia yeah. Nonstop. Oh, absolutely. I felt, I felt bad for the kids over there because I, I said, geez, all the girls are wearing masks. How do you see which ones are cute? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany's cousins, I said, man, you can't even see the girls around here because well, they're wearing masks all the time. 
from now on you have to like go boy you got some nice eyes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no but i'm just thinking that maybe maybe the idea of wearing the mask is not a bad idea if you've got the flu you know at any time and now that we've got so many of them out there and every home has a whole box of them there when it comes to flu season you get the flu shot but also wear a mask too you know because i didn't get i didn't get sick all winter of course i didn't go i didn't get sick for a year why i didn't go out for a year yeah yeah i cannot recall the last time i ever got sick really yep didn't i make you nauseous occasionally maybe <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 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 you know, um, when we would get intimate, I think you used to vomit. I, I think I, I, I think I remember that. Uh, in fact, dodging your vomit was the hard part than having sex. <laughs> hmm. Yes, I was quite the lover. Anyway, uh, where did... I where got did, pneumonia, but I don't... The, I don't know how you get that, though. Is that pneumonia like is an entirely or? different animal, and I don't know how you get it either. How do you get yeah. it, do you, uh, uh, Jeff? Do you know? Turn pneumonia? on pneumonia. Yeah. Is it like a virus or what? It's a, it's it's an infection of the lungs. I know that. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Uh, I don't know. Whatever. It wasn't fun though. But, it, you know, it wasn't that bad. I was just, I started to lose, I couldn't breathe. Other than that, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> yeah. How's your head? Huh? Your head's okay? Your head? Uh, no, it still itches. I don't know what that is, man. It's It's been too long. Nice Ooh. hair, but that itch. By the way, to Jeff, you don't have, you don't have your microphone. You might have something. Oh, there you are. We can hear you now. We can hear you. Yeah. What, but Jeff, what, what is, do you know what pneumonia is? No, I, you know, I... I mean, how it. you get it, you, you don't get it from somebody else. You come down with it. You don't get it. You come down with pneumonia. Yeah. Well, is it a virus or what is it? I, a, I don't know. Kinds. They always say you, you come down. There's, they have shots for it. I, you, you can get yeah, a pneumonia There's shot. a viral pneumonia and there's a bacterial pneumonia. Oh, okay. Which but, one, but, when they give you a shot every, yeah. every couple of years for pneumonia, which one is that for, viral or... Or bacteria. I don't remember. I, I've had the, the pneumonia vaccine, but I don't remember whether it was for viral or bacterial. And I've had it too. I think you only have to get it once every ten years or something like that. Right. You know, and they usually <laughs> recommend it for old farts like me. Yeah, like and Charlie. Shot. I'll, I'll include Charlie <clears throat> and Jeff. I'll include the. Uh, I would guess so. How old are you, yeah. Vernon? Seventy-two. Okay, another old fart. Okay, so we. Yeah. He's still young. Dude, I just, just should call this <laughs> old, old fart radio. What? what, what uh, <laughs> old fart. John, how old are you? I'll be uh, sixty-four this year in October. You're getting there. You're getting there. Yeah. 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 The young, the young punk in the group is what? Brian, you're under fifty, aren't you? Are you over? No, I'm 53 or 54, something okay, like that. Okay, so, and, and, and dare I ask the woman in the group how old she is? <laughs> 56. 50, 56. 56. So the young punk in the group here has got to be Trucker Steve. I'll bet you Trucker Steve is the youngest one, one here. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm just I don't know, Rocky, Rocky stuff. might be younger. <laughs> I'm just now starting to notice people on the street calling me, hey, Pop, you want to buy some drugs? <laughs> I look at my... I'll tell you what Albert, like what Al, what Albert brought up from Florida, and I, I've never been able to find anything good about Florida, except this, maybe. What, what Albert brought up was, among other things, cannabis-infused gummies. Now, uh, so I take about a half a gummy before I go to sleep. I haven't been taking my pills for about a week and a half now. And I take the gummy. I'm out like a light. And it's probably better for you than the pharmaceuticals. Oh, I'm sure. I'm yeah, sure well. it is. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it, it's uh, Indica or something, and they say Indica is very good to put you to sleep. So, you know. 
Uh, it's Kathleen. Where does she live? Don't you live in Humboldt County? Mendocino. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mendocino, but that's close, right? All you have to do yep. is breathe, breathe the air. In, is it in the Humboldt County? Yeah, all you have to do is breathe. No, it's Mendocino County. Mendocino County, okay, yeah, got it. All yeah. you have to do is uh, breathe the air up there and uh, you, you get high. You know, yeah, what about the fires? Jeez, that. No, we yeah, haven't had any anywhere close to us. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, but now. We'll just run across the street into the ocean. Yeah, but what happened to all those people up there who had all those plantations? They called them plantations where they were mm. growing pot up in the mountains. What, the cartels? The, the cartels. And also just the normal people were growing it up there, too, you know. Um, uh, is it legal to grow it up there or what? I, mean, I don't. I going. doubt that it's legal to grow it without a license. Okay, mm -hmm. but uh, I think you can get Indian, a license. You probably and have grow license. It. Yeah. Oh, listen. Even before it was legal, it was the second largest cash crop in California. Yeah. And approaching number one, I think top cash crop are like fruits, and things like that. But this was, you know. And that was some pretty good shit they were growing up there. Uh, the only, yeah, they, huh? They just busted another house in San Jose, and oh my God, it was like two story house, and I don't know how you could even walk. There were plants everywhere on the ground, <laughs> all on the ground, and they had lighting and then everything like that, all illegal. But, but I thought so it, crazy. I, but I, but I thought I thought it was it was not illegal in California. But I guess growing it without a license, without a license, I, yeah. Yeah, I think you're only a, an individual is only allowed so many plants. Yeah. Well, you see, yeah. I, this is what I this is what I find the problem. There were people private citizens who were growing pot up in your neck of the woods, right. Schmoody, uh, who, this was their family business. And mm -hmm. now this thing has become legal. What they've done is make it the purview of people who've got money to set up the business. And the private entrepreneur is not allowed to practice. And that was, uh, that, that's what I felt worst about. I felt that these people, should have been given automatic licenses to grow. You know, they should have said, hey, you know, you've been doing this all along. We don't want to ruin your family business. Now you're legal. Let's do it within a legal framework. But instead, what they did is they opened it up to if you want to get into the business, you got to have hundreds of millions of dollars to do it. And there's well, something wrong in Petaluma. That. So, uh, you know, I'm taking my dad to the doctor. So we come out of Bodega Bay and we're cruising along mm -hmm. and then we take pepper road and hit 101 mm -hmm. and so as we're cruising i see something spray painted in the road so um i finally slowed down and it says no pot in our neighborhood and then i saw a big flyer a big sign that said uh no pot on pepper and i think it's uh no pot on pepper.com i guess a commercial pot grower wanted to come in and they're saying uh-uh not in our neighborhood uh, well, I mean, that the, the terrible part about it is, is there were people who for years were doing this illegally. All of a sudden it becomes legal. Shouldn't they be able to go legit themselves? And instead they yeah, can't. you'd rather have the mom and pop than the big yeah. uh, Absolutely. In fact, yeah. if I were to legalize, they're legalizing it here in uh, New York. I would legalize it only for mom and pop operations. Yeah. I would not allow <laughs> corporate pot growing. Yeah. You know? Um, can't we, you know, yep. can't we leave something open to the, uh, to the, the budding entrepreneur? Yeah. You know, but, but, um, uh, but, uh, we got, uh, we got, uh, Trucker Steve over there. Trucker Steve, we were asking, you were gone. How old are you? 46. 46. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. He's the young kid tonight. Hmm? Huh? Yeah. yeah. Isn't that terrible? Yeah, I wonder why kids don't call this show. Hi, kids. How are you? This is Uncle Alex. You can call me up, and uh, I'll tell you everything you need to know. Uh, wake up, Charlie. What? Charlie, wake up. Ch Charlie's awake. I'm look. I'm looking up something. Oh, he looked like you were sleeping. He wasn't asleep. <laughs> I keep freezing up. Maybe that's what you're thinking about. Yeah. 
So um, uh, let me see here. What else was in the news today that I was... Uh, really... Trump uh, fucking uh, Department of Justice uh, mm -hmm. subpoenaed all these uh, congressmen's uh, phone records. Oh, they had wow. Apple yeah. do it. Yeah. Secretly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Just Just the ones he doesn't like. Isn't it interesting, though, that Biden has ordered the uh, the uh, Justice Department to defend Trump against the allegations against him? With, no, by I, this I don't think Biden Biden didn't have anything to do with that. I think uh, Garrett Garland, Martin just just said, well, you know, no, but we're no, not defending but, Trump. We're defending the office. You're defending whatever. the office. It was something that happened while he was in office, and that he needed yeah. a defense against it. Yeah, it's, it's total bullshit, though. Yeah, but everybody's going, oh, isn't that amazing? Uh, Biden's standing up for Trump. No, he's not really standing up for Trump. And then Trump tried to pass off. You know, they did this. Uh, the Department of the Interior came out with a, re a report on <laughs> a report on uh, she's playing with her pussy. Uh, 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 a big deal about. Uh, now, what was I going to say? <laughs> I Department of the Interior. Oh, yeah. The Department of Interior came out with a report. I guess exonerating Trump or just saying that uh, nothing in their purview went wrong when he went in front of the church with his Bible and they were tear gassing everybody around him. Uh, yeah, yeah. And and so Trump thought that was a vindication of him, but it was just the Department of the Interior's take on it. It had nothing to do with a legal thing. Yeah. But he did they got, really tear gas people? Yes. Yeah, when he went yeah, when, when he went out with the Bible in front of that church for that photo yeah. op, we that all, upside down Bible. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It probably burned his hands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, That's good. Uh, yes, uh, Charlie. Yeah, I, I looked it up. The uh, vaccine that you get for pneumonia is for the bacterial pneumonia. Mm. So the other pneumonia you can still get. <clears throat> Yeah, but the viral I, pneumonia, I, they, they can't uh, vaccinate you against that. Yeah. Um, well, people were dying of COVID in the hospital and had to be put on ventilators. Do they have pneumonia? Was that what, one of the reasons why? I don't mm -hmm. know. See how little we know. See, yeah. in a year, mm -hmm. did we learn any decent amount of medicine? No, we didn't. <laughs> Wear a mask. That's all. Wear yeah. a mask. Wear a mask. Wash like, your hands. Yeah. But, well, that story today about mm -hmm. the, the Lafayette Square, the, mm -hmm. the Interior Department is mm -hmm. in charge of the Park Service. Mm -hmm. And what they're saying is the Park Service was going to clear out Lafayette Park so that they could expand the perimeter around mm -hmm. the White House. Yeah. And the IG, and the IG report came out saying that this was not something that Trump initiated for his little uh, photo op. They were trying to say that that was not the case. But, you know, if you if you just want to expand the perimeter, why the urgency? Why do you have yeah. to use pepper spray? Yeah. yeah. And, and like like Trump's going to go walking out there without those people there anyway, you know? No, Can he's you not. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I... Uh, uh, people there. They were just... It, 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 we're finding out so many things that were going on. The fact that what CNN reporters were being, uh, their their phones their were being phone tapped and so on. Phone records, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean uh, all this really un-American stuff that was going on when he was president. I mean, I know we're not surprised because we we have an intense dislike for this guy, but I didn't realize that anybody would have the nerve to do what he was doing. You know, and we've had other administrations who have done some pretty horrible things, but nothing well, that even did approached. the same kind of stuff, right? Nixon no, did the I same did kind that, of stuff, no. but but with a sense, certain sense still of legality. In Nixon didn't words, go after another branch of government. That's what this yeah. was. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I mean, you know, I mean, and and he went after what congressmen and senators, and I, it was well, Adam just, Schiff primarily. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I mean, it's terrible what he what he did. And the fact that he's sitting down there Mar-a-Lago 
just eating taco chips, you know, and, and get, getting <laughs> Cheeto, Cheeto dust all over his face. McDonald's. Yeah. Uh, pisses the shit of, off out of me. Because I'd like to see that guy in jail. What he did to us, he killed... How many Americans you figure died from COVID because of his not caring? 300,000. 300,000? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. more than that. Well, yeah. we're about ready to hit 600,000. We will hit 600,000. <clears throat> Very slowly, but we're, you know, it's all slowed up. Aren't they thinking the number is really around 900,000? That's the estimate, yeah. <laughs> wow. And, and he did nothing about that. I mean, he's responsible for the death of how many Americans? It's terrible. Uh, I remember when there, there was like 50,000 and he was bragging saying, ah, oh, see, we're start, we're going to start coming down from this. And they haven't even peaked that curve yet. <clears throat> he was bragging about it, said we won't have up to 70,000. Well, Phil Meyer just wrote <clears throat> me, Trump could cure cancer and the common cold. And you would say he's putting doctors and drug companies out of business. Oh, my God. No, Trump couldn't do anything. <laughs> no. I don't agree with that. Trump is not a doctor or a scientist. <laughs> no. And I he, heard something interesting today. You know where the term drinking the Kool-Aid came from? It came from yeah, Jonestown. Uh, Jonestown. Yeah. We were talking about Jonestown. that the other, other night. Jonestown, yeah. of course. Jonestown. Yeah. Of course. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. They means. all drank Kool-Aid. Poison Kool-Aid. Yeah, that was drinking Yeah, it was only well, poison the last time. It takes 12 cups of sugar for that little packet. <laughs> it was only poison the last time they drank it. But they've been drinking yeah. Kool-Aid all yeah. along. Yeah, but that's the first time we had that phrase come into being. Right. Was drinking the Kool-Aid. I didn't even think about that. You know, I just thought it was an expression that just existed. And that you're right, absolutely right. It happened because of Jonestown. Mm -hmm. And by the way, in all deference to the Kool-Aid company, there was no Kool-Aid in there. They took the cyanide and they flavored it with something, but it wasn't Kool-Aid. Ah. But they, uh -huh. just it's kind of like, you know, years ago, years ago, Fatty Arbuckle held a party at the St. Francis Hotel in San Francisco. He was a, the biggest star in silent films and silent comedian. Uh, second only, uh, second only to, I think, Chaplin. And uh, he held a party at the St. Francis Hotel in San Francisco in which a woman died. And they claimed it was his fault. And they put him on trial. They put him on trial three times. And at one point, they asked the doctor, how could this woman have gotten a hemorrhage in her, in her womb? And the doctor said, well, by the insertion of something like, oh, I don't know, a Coke bottle. Mm -hmm. And so from then on, it was always a big oh, deal geez. about the Coke bottle and Fatty Arbuckle. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and the guy was just using that as an example, OK? As a matter of fact, Sad part about it was Fatty Arbuckle wasn't even there. And it took nope. three trials to find him not guilty. But by that time, it was too late. Oh, by that time, well, he, he had a career after that directing movies. But it was, it was, it ruined his life. Just ruined his life. And he was supposed to be a very sweet guy. Everybody loved him. You know, anyway, it, we, I, I'm not even going to bring up Fatty Arbuckle. God knows we have nobody listening to us under the age of like 50. So, I mean, uh, I better not start with Fatty Arbuckle stories and then I'll get rid of you guys. Anyway, that's it for tonight. Hey, thank you so much, Trucker Steve, for being here. You're here every night and we appreciate it. Same to you, Vernon Nunn. Love having you here. Uh, Schmoody, uh, Kathleen. Keep smoking it. Uh, Jeff, thank you so much. Uh, John Larkin, great. Just don't show any more dirty pictures on my show. Uh, uh oh, sweetie. I even enough. looked it up last night. Even simple nudity doesn't count, okay? And uh, 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 Brian, oh, look at the sun going down behind him. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> and also, Charlie Wallace, every one of you, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give it. Big wave goodbye back at you, okay? There they go. That's our citizen panel for tonight. There'll be another one getting together with Jack Bishop right after we're through here on the intersection. Uh, he'll be here, and uh, you'll be using Skype, and you'll be using the name GabNet Live in order to sign into it. Uh, we'll be back again tomorrow night for the last show of the week, our Friday show. Thanks to all the people who joined us tonight, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow night. 
Same time, same station in life. So in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, please get vaccinated if you haven't done it already. And if you're not vaccinated, wear a mask. But whatever you do, be safe out there. I need every listener I can get. Bye.